This is the third video of eight that I'm sharing from my full course, Vue.js 3 Composition API with Pinia and Beats. In this video, we're going to be learning all about methods, computed properties, and watches using the Composition API. You can find a link to the whole playlist down in the description, and you can grab the full course with my discount at dannys.link slash composition API. We've already learned how to add methods to our component. Well, let's just quickly go over how we can pass parameters to our methods. First, I'm just going to remove these comments from before. And so let's say we want to be able to increase our counter by a specific number rather than just by one. Well, we could pass in the number we want to increase it by as a parameter. So on our increase counter button here, we can just add parentheses to our method name and pass in a value. Let's just pass in one for now. And if we jump down to our increase counter method, we can now receive that parameter like this. And as a shorthand, we can actually just remove these parentheses if we want to. And let's just log this out to make sure it's coming through. So console.log and amount, save that. And I'm just gonna open up the Chrome DevTools. So you can either go to view in Chrome, then developer, then developer tools, or you can use the keyboard shortcut and jump to the console down here. And if I click on the increase counter button, yeah, we can see this number one being logged out. So let's adjust the logic in our increase counter method so that it increases the count in our reactive objects by the amount that we're passing in instead of just by one. So we could either do counterdata.count equals counterdata.count plus amount, or as a shorthand, we could do counterdata.count plus equals amount. And I'll save that, make sure that's still working. And yep, that's still working. So now we could add a second button for incrementing the counter by two. So I'll jump back up to the template and I'll duplicate this increase counter button, but we'll pass in two to this method. And I'll just change the text in this button to plus plus, save that. And I'll just zoom out a little bit. And now when we click this button, we can see our counter is increased by two, but this button is still increasing it by one. And I'll just scroll down and remove that console.log. And let's do the same for our decrease counter. So I'll duplicate this decrease counter button. And in the second button, we'll pass in the value one. And then in the first button, we'll pass in the value two. And change the text in the button to minus minus. Save that. And we need to update this decrease counter method. And so again, we can do counterdata.count equals counterdata.count minus amount. Oh, we do need to pass in the amount pass that in here. Or as a shorthand, we can do counterdata.count minus equals amount. So let's save that and see if that's working. I'll just drag the console over a bit. Yeah, this button is decreasing the counter by one. and This button is decreasing it by two. And by the way, if you want to get access to the event object, then we can do that by just passing a second parameter to our method. So I'll pass it to this one here. And this needs to be named dollar event. And now if we jump to our increase counter method, we'll need to put the parentheses back in since there's going to be two parameters. We can then just pass in the event object like that. You can use any name you want, but I'll just use E. And now we should be able to log this out. And then when we click this increase by one button, we can see the event object being logged out and we can then get access to what element was clicked and whereabouts the cursor was, etc. And before we move on, let's just remove this console.log. Computed properties are properties which are usually generated based on reactive data, which are cached and only updated when their dependencies change. So for example, we could create a computed property which takes the value of this counter and manipulates it somehow. And the value of that computed property will only be regenerated whenever the counter changes. So let's just remind ourselves how we added computed properties using the options API. So I'll jump to the bottom of this script section and add another script section and add the export default. 
And in the options API, we had to add a computed option. And we had to place all of our computed properties in here, such as my computed property. And then within that, we would perform some logic based on a data property. And then we would return something. And this meant that all of our computed properties had to be lumped together in this one computed object. However, with the composition API, we can create a computed property literally anywhere within our script section. And this is really helpful, especially on larger components, because it means we can group all of our relevant code together, which is something that I demonstrated back in module one. And as I said, back in module one, this is one of the main advantages of the composition API. The fact that it allows us to group all of our related code together, whether it's data properties, methods, computed properties, watches, lifecycle hooks, etc. So let's just comment out this options API example here. Uh, we'll add a computed property to our composition API code. Now to create a computed property, we do need to import the computed method from view. And we can just add that to our import here. So comma computed. And now let's set up a computed property which determines whether the counter is odd or even and then spits this out on the page. First, let's just set up the markup. So after this div with all our buttons and the counter, I'll add a paragraph tag and I'll just add the text. This counter is odd, although we're going to make this word odd dynamic using our computed property. And I'll save that. And let's scroll down a bit. And again, we can create our computed property anywhere we want. I guess it makes sense to place it after this reactive object with our data. And so to create a computed property, we just need to fire the computed method. And within that, we just need to pass in a method like this. And then we need to return something. And in order to make use of this computed property, we need to assign it to a constant or a variable. So I'll assign this to a constant called odd or even. Oops, I spelled that wrong, odd or even. And we can use the remainder operator to work out whether our number is odd or even. So we can just do if, and then to access our counter, we can just do counter data dot count. So if counter data dot count remainder two is equal to zero. In other words, if we divide our count value by two and get the remainder, well, if it's an even number and we divide it by two, then the remainder will be zero. And we know that the number is even. So if this is the case, then we can return even. Otherwise, else we can just return odd. And we can actually just get rid of this else if we want to, since it will never actually get to this line if this first line is true. So I'll get rid of the word else and save that. And this computed property is now ready to use in our template. So I'll jump up to the markup we just added, this paragraph, remove the word odd and add double curly braces and just output our computed property odd or even. Save that. Uh, we can see the counter is zero and it says this counter is even. If we increase it by one, it says this counter is odd. If we set it to two, then it's even again, etc. If you're wondering how to do filters with Vue 3 and the Composition API, well, they've actually been removed from Vue 3. If you just Google Vue 3 filters and jump to this page from the migration guide, you can see that they've actually been removed. So in Vue 2, we could add a filters object to our default export, and we could create a filter which would accept a value and then return something else. And then we could use that filter in our template by just adding a pipe followed by the name of the filter. And if we scroll down to the 3x update, it says filters are removed and no longer supported. Instead, we recommend replacing them with method calls or computed properties. Now, this isn't a big problem because we can easily achieve the same functionality as a filter by using computed properties or methods. And in fact, what we've done here with this odd or even is kind of like a filter. We're taking a value and outputting something based on that value. But one of the handy things about filters was we could easily make a global filter and use it throughout our app. So let's say we had an app which displayed currency 
on lots of different pages. We could create a filter which would convert a number into a formatted currency string with a dollar at the start and maybe some commas to separate the zeros. However, in view three, we can achieve the same thing by creating a computed property or a method and making that computed property or method global by using composables. And then we can easily use that functionality anywhere within our app. And we'll learn more about this later on in the course when we cover composables. Watchers allow us to essentially watch a reactive data property and then do something whenever it changes. And let's just remind ourselves how we did that with the options API. So, so I'm gonna move this closing comment up here. Uh, let's say we had a data method and within that we had a count property set to zero initially. And then we want to watch this count and let's say do something when it hits a particular value. Well, we would have to add a watch option object to our export. And then within that, we could add a watcher to watch this count like this. So we could create a method called count. Uh, we can pass in two parameters, the new count and the old count. And then we can do something whenever count changes. So we could do something like if new count is equal to 20, then we could alert a message. And again, this meant with the options API that all of our watches had to be grouped together inside this watch object. And this meant that these watches are often many, many lines of code away from the actual data that they're working with. However, with the composition API, we can set up our watches anywhere we like within our script section, which means we can easily group our watches with their relevant data. I'm just gonna grab this closing comment and place it at the bottom of this script section again. Uh, let's do this the composition API way. Let's set up a watcher which watches our count and then fires an alert when it reaches 20. So to use a watcher, we do need to import the watch method from view. And it makes sense to place our watcher after the data that we're gonna be watching. So we'll place that here. So to create the watcher, we just wanna fire the watch method. And the first parameter should be the reactive data item that we're gonna watch. And if our counter was in a ref, such as const count equals ref like that, then we could just pass in count for the first parameter. But since our counter is in a reactive object, it's actually a nested data property and we can't actually do counter data dot count, that's not gonna work. So we have to use a getter instead to actually grab this nested data property for us. And we can do that like so, we can just do parentheses and then an arrow symbol. And then we can just add the nested data property that we wanna grab, which is counter data dot count. And then for the second parameter, we add a method. So parentheses and then arrow curly braces. And again, we can access the new value and the old value here. So new count and old count. And I'll just get rid of this count ref that we added. And so we should be able to log these out now. So I'll log out new count and save that, reload the page. And if we change our counter, we can see our watcher is being fired. We can see new count one in the console. And every time it changes, our watcher will be fired again. So let's show an alert if our counter hits 20. So we can just do if new count is equal to 20, alert, way to go, you made it to 20. And since we're not using the old count, we don't need to actually declare it here. So I'll get rid of that and save that. And let's see if that's working. So hopefully when we get to 20, we see an alert. If you want to grab the full course with my discount applied, jump to dannys.link slash composition API and the link is in the description. Or there are five more videos to go in this series. Make sure you click subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of them. And you can find a link to the whole playlist down in the description.